cinders. You shall go to the ball. Every bride dreams of the perfect wedding day. Princess Day. Oh, I'm going to cry. <laughs> but some <laughs> take it to extremes. <sighs> Meet the brides who will stop at nothing to get what they want. If I can't find the perfect dress, there just won't be a wedding. Too, too skirt. No, very. No matter what it takes. It looks lovely. I look like a £10 hugger. Or what it costs. I don't actually know how much we've spent. Oh, but you know, you just feel like you're doing so much stuff and, like, trying to hold everything together. And heaven help anyone who gets in the way. That bridesmaid is no longer coming to my wedding. Don't drink anymore. Don't, don't drink anymore. Yeah. I'm going to be sick. You have got my rings, haven't you? I've got a killer. If you were like that at the end of the aisle, I will not walk down it. That bitch needs to die. On tonight's show, a diminutive bride with an epic vision. But has she got the staff? Where's your dress cap? In vacuums. There. Mine is at home. Seriously? Seriously. And a blushing bride struggling to get a look in. What do you think? The amount of stones need to be equal, I think. That one, there's got too many in. I'm more of a groomzilla than you are the bridezilla. Yeah. <laughs> Our first badass bride-to-be is 23-year-old construction site manager Michelle from Croydon, who's well used to bossing people around. I like things to be done quite efficiently and I know what I want. In less than a week, she'll be cementing her relationship with her childhood sweetheart, Amit. Hey, God's sake, trying to kill us four days before the wedding. <laughs> She has it planned out in her mind how the perfect day will go, and it's my job to execute. When it comes to Michelle, I'm happy to do anything that's needed to be done. Michelle started planning her dream wedding in her mind long before Amit proposed. I don't know if it was two or three years ago, she had like already chosen like her wedding colours and stuff, and like she'd made an album on her laptop and everything of like different ideas, like different cake ideas, chairs. Yeah, she's, she's been really organised. Amit and I are having a Christian Asian fusion wedding. So <laughs> the ceremony is a Christian ceremony, but it's in an Asian hall, and then all the decor's Asian, and we're getting married in an Indian stage. And her nine bridesmaids will all be required to learn several African and Asian dances to perform on the big day. She knows what she wants. She's really kind of on the ball. The celebration is going to be massive. We are having 570 guests. We've got 57 tables of 10 people. It's going to be a proper party. It's under control. <laughs> well. <laughs> but Amit's idea of how to organise a big bash doesn't quite meet Michelle's high standards. Half of the things I wouldn't have thought about until the day of the wedding and it would have been like, oh, I didn't really think about that. Let's freestyle it. So Michelle's sister Isabel has been roped in to help with the seating plans for the huge reception. Hi, Mum, we're doing the table plans. Yeah. You know what Sister Lavette? Yeah. Is she coming alone? Michelle, she'd like message me about 20 times a day, like, can you confirm this person's coming? Can you find out if their partner's coming? So yeah, it's been a lot of pressure. She can't bring anyone. There's no, no. space on that, on that table. No. I spent the whole of my time telling people what to do. Right, Mum, there's no changes on the day. I just want it to be done. I just need it to be done. Our next bride-to-be, 26-year-old Alice from Shropshire, knew exactly what she wanted when she first laid eyes on husband-to-be Mark at the gym. When I first saw Mark, I obviously fancied the pants off him. I think Alice made the first move in asking me out on a date. Um, well, pushing me for a date. Pretty badass. But something stopping Alice from being a badass bride-to-be. Her diva groom to be Mark's made the decisions with the venue, the food, the centrepieces, the table plans, the seating plan. What do you think? The amount of stones need to be equal, I think. That one, there's got too many in. I'm more of a groomzilla than you are the bridezilla. Yeah. <laughs> and this badass groom wants every detail just right. I'm particular about what I want and you make it work. <laughs> yeah, you tell me what you want and I just do it. 
Alice's mum, Andrea, has been trying to help her daughter look after one-year-old Duke while she gets on with the planning. Alice has been really good with the build-ups of the wedding, really. Sometimes she's got a bit irate. There's a couple of times where she's been really, really stressed and we've had to go out for a coffee or go out for a couple of hours. I think Mark would be a greenzilla, definitely, and he wants everything to be perfect for Alice and perfect for everybody else. There's just one area that Alice has insisted on doing by herself. See, I don't like that. The only thing I decided on was a dress. <laughs> but not without Mark letting her know exactly how he imagines his perfect bride to look. I like a more traditional style dress. I like this sort of thing. See, I, I, don't like, I don't like lace and sleeves. I think I've been a lot more hands-on than most grooms should be. Yeah, just a bit. I've got this image in my mind, and I might be the one who wants the big white wedding more than Alice. Two days before her wedding, Michelle is choreographing Amit and their 16-strong bridal party in a rehearsal at the venue. So the grooms will stand at this end, at the beginning, then we come one by one, you meet them, and then get on the stage. Oh, OK. Michelle has an ambitious vision for their Ghana meets India big day. The dancing in our wedding. Well, this is another thing that I've seen from other weddings that I've been to, is the dances. So they did, like, entrance dances into the reception. So that's one thing that I've always loved. But not everyone likes to strut their stuff as much as Michelle. Incredibly nervous, actually. So am I. There's going to be so many people. And right. It's easy to do it in, in when there's no one here. When there's no one here, yeah. <laughs> At first, it was quite difficult to get the groomsmen on board because they were quite thrown by it, thinking, oh, we're not natural dancers, there's 550 people who are going to be looking at us, what if we make a mistake? But this demanding bride-to-be won't let a small case of nerves get in the way of her master plan. The wedding has to be perfect. You have social media these days, so <laughs> if something goes wrong, people are going to have that for years and years <laughs> to come. In Shropshire, Alice and her maid of honour, Jackie, are picking up her wedding dress, which demanding hubby-to-be Mark wishes he could inspect. Well, when it comes to the wedding, we haven't been the most traditional couple because it's all the small decisions on small details. I've been taking those decisions. Yeah. But her dress is the one area Alice wants to decide on herself, though Mark has clearly stated his preferences. When we first started looking at dresses, I was tending to go towards the direction of more traditional, where Alice was more non-traditional. What I said I liked in a dress was long white, open top, and I don't like the sequins and lace and all of that. Hi. Uh, Mark was very particular about the wedding dress when we were looking online. He, he knew what he liked in wedding dresses, but I think you'll be totally shocked when I walk down the aisle to him in, the, in this dress because it's nothing what Mark envisioned. And try your dress on, yeah? Are you excited? I'm nervous. Why oh, don't be nervous. <laughs> it's going to look beautiful. Alice is going out on a limb because it's the only detail of the wedding she's been able to get her way with. OK, here she is. Looks absolutely beautiful on you. That's better than anything I ever imagined. Yeah? Yeah. That's better than you described, actually. Yeah. I don't think words can do it justice. I love the sparkles on it. Yeah, they do. It just catches the light as she moves. Yeah, when it comes to the dress, I have been a diva. I have been a bridezilla when it comes to the dress. And for Mark's list of pet hates, Alice has bravely gone for both sequins and lace, and he won't get to comment until the big day. Does it fit OK? Yeah, it fits perfect. Holds my tummy in lovely. Really? <laughs> Dream dress. Sparkling. I think Mark will like it. If he changes his mind entirely, maybe. If he doesn't cry, I'm walking back and he's doing it again. Who's the diva now? For the price we paid, it better be a nice dress. It is. In Croydon, it's three days before the wedding, and bossy bride-to-be Michelle has called her bridesmaids to a final dress fitting. I have nine bridesmaids. When you have so many bridesmaids, it is obviously very hard to coordinate things. But even harder is getting everyone to do what's expected of them. Who has their bridesmaids dresses? I do. I've got mine. So, so how many? How many? 
One, two, three, four, Priscilla. Let's go. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to go try mine on. So you've got half people with their dresses and half people without. It's just annoying when you've planned everything, you've told them, bring your dresses, we're all going to try them on together, and still people fail to do that. Where's your dress cut? It was um, being vacuumed. Philly, yours. Mine was too big, so it was taking Veronica? Mine is being altered just the length I'm picking up tomorrow. Mine. It's been three months since the last dress fitting, so Michelle's next challenge is making sure they still fit. I'm good. Obviously, time has elapsed, and in that time, bodies, sizes, and shapes have changed. This. Mine is at home. It fit on Saturday, and I haven't put on any weight since then. Okay, so. <laughs> Debbie's one is the one that we're most worried about, <laughs> and it's not here. So I will know that it fits on the, on the day. No, I'll take a picture for you. You can see it. I don't think perfectionist Michelle is too impressed. If something isn't going my way or something isn't right, I try very hard not to have to shout. Generally, it will just be like, seriously? And it knows the look, obviously. <laughs> he knows the look. I think the girls have just been given the look. Can, can you tell by my face? I'm, really, <laughs> I'm a little bit worried because I'm not gonna. I'm, that means I'm not gonna see the full picture until the wedding day. No Ooh, there's the look again. Seriously, is that is that what you're doing? The four that have got their dresses face inspection. <laughs> For the reception, the girls are entering in their dresses and we're doing a dance. Hope they'll be wearing high heels. So yours is really long. It's basically cut wrong, so it needs to stay like this. There's no change. Michelle's had her few moments where she's like, ah, oh, really stressed. She knows what she wants. She's a perfectionist, so it's like, ah, oh, like she wants what she wants when she wants it. It reflects very much on me if the dress doesn't look right because it's like I've chosen those dresses, and they might think that I've passed that as yeah, that's okay. She can wear that. It may not be the perfection she's after, but with just days to go before the wedding, Michelle will have to make do. And hope the girls don't trip over. <laughs> Groomzilla Mark and bride-to-be Alice are shopping for wedding rings. Oh, look at that one. With Alice's maid of honour, Jackie. I think ring shopping today is quite a lot more important for Alice. to see what we can find. I've seen one I like already. Have you? Yeah, in the window. Bam. Mm. Mine's a lot more simple, just a piece of metal going on my finger. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, who's been a stickler for every last detail of the wedding planning so far, is hoping that this will be the one task he can get done and dusted fast. OK, so we go in? Ready? Yeah, let's go have a look. We'll just need a nice one again. Hello. Can I have you another the film ticket? Yes, we're looking for some wedding rings. If I start with you first, yeah. is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Mine's quite simple. Yeah. Oh, you're normally <laughs> the other way around. It's normally the guys that are more of a pain, to be honest. What are you looking for? Something that's matte, simple, mm -hmm. and just easy to wear. Do you prefer the two-tone? Yeah, I do like the two-tone. No, I thought I'd just like a matte, but the two-tone's quite nice. Mm, okay. I, I quite like this one. Yeah? Yeah. Which one do you prefer, that or that? That one. You if can, I, if I'm going for a two... Time. No, that one's more comfortable. So far, there's been a lot more to getting a ring than what I thought. It's not as easy as just seeing, seeing one in the window and picking it out. There's different medals, different sets and everything, so... It's been quite interesting. I learned a lot about rings, apparently. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's really light. That just looks like a normal, everyday ring, doesn't it? I know, I still like that one. Yeah, I prefer that one. Yeah. Do you? But if Mark prefers the shape of that one, I do like it. I do like that one. It does look more traditional. Mark's come in thinking that it's just a piece of metal on his finger, but uh, it turns out he's pussier than me, so he's looked at loads. <laughs> You're going to struggle to get a ring. I'm going to struggle to get a ring. <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting a ring. <laughs> While Mark faffs, Alice goes straight for the ring she spotted in the window. Are you thinking plain or diamond set? Diamond set, mm -hmm. I'd like. Yeah. Something that would have to go nicely with that, yeah, wouldn't it? A grain set would yeah. ideally be your best yeah. option. When that fits perfectly. Yeah, I do want something like that, yeah. Well, they're beautiful together. They do, don't they? That's definitely the one on. Yeah. I feel really nervous that I found the perfect ring because <laughs> it's the first one I've looked at. I do like it, I really do. Mark, on the other hand, is getting bogged down in the details. These are some of the other shapes that we can do. And you can have it brushed, yeah. so it'll be matte, 
It doesn't have to be polished. I don't know. I said I like them, that, but I prefer this now. <laughs> <laughs> After she showed us all the rings, it turns out I'm quite a bit more fussy than what I originally thought. Yeah, I don't like that. Don't like that no. one. So we can rule that one out. Do you like that? No. 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 Is that the one that That's I first, the one that you first said, yeah. said that you really liked? So I do like that one. Yeah. Do you think you've made a decision on that shape? Oh my god, you're more picky than me. I, I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot harder than what I thought. After trying on pretty much every ring in the store, Mark has to make his choice. Okay, so that one's yeah. a six mil, that, this one's a five mil, but same they are the thing, same yeah. rings. He's been looking at loads. He's been worse than me, actually. So I think he's looked at seven. It's a bit shiny, but... He's been more of a nightmare than me. I do like this one. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. There we go. We can't afford food. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll take them. Yeah. <laughs> In Croydon, Michelle's taking a short break from being wedding drill sergeant to get herself prepped for the big day with her sister Isabel. So today I'm here getting myself a bit pampered and getting my nails done, but I'm looking forward to it just because it's the first like bridal stuff I'm doing, so it's starting to feel a lot more real that I'm getting married soon. It's not only a few days to go. I think I'm going to look how I've imagined myself to look on the day. Everything's going to plan in terms of how I'm, I'm looking. I think it's easier to control myself than it is to control other people, obviously. <laughs> Fiance Amit has been trying to control the spiralling costs while making sure Michelle gets her perfect long planned day. We budgeted around 25k. As things have, have progressed and we've got closer to the wedding, a few things have been added on. A few things have been uh, changed and upscaled. So we're, we've crossed the 30k mark um, for the wedding. So we've definitely over the budget. But I, I wanted the day to be perfect. It's Michelle's big day. Um, it's only a day that's going to come round once and I want it to be as perfect as she wants it to be. And for their Ghanaian Indian extravaganza, everyone has to have two outfits. Finished picking up the, the Indian suit as well as the groomsmen suits. So that's all sorted, but I've still got lots to do still. Currently going to get my tailored suit. Um, so hopefully that should all be good. Jacket first? Yeah, just the jacket. We'll try on the jacket. Let's go with the jacket. Yeah. Goes round on your shoulders, fits there. Nice, very, very nice. Straight button. The suit fits really well, I'm really happy with it. So I think I look good. I think I'm ready to walk down the aisle. We'll have to see what Michelle thinks. Michelle has other things on her mind. Oh, ready? Not ready. She'll be fine. I'm so scared. No, she'll be fine. Manicure and pedicure done, Michelle now faces her first ever bikini wax in preparation for the wedding night. Getting a wax is really important because this is going to be me and Alex's first time together. So I feel like it has to be perfect as well. As much as I don't want to have to go through the pain of it, I just think it's a good thing to do to start off the marriage really well. Because Michelle is a devout Christian, Amit's had a long wait through the six years they've been dating. Hold on, hold on, hold on my hand. <laughs> it's fine. What was it Too far with Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it's Michelle's turn to suffer. In the beginning of our relationship, it was really hard because Amit didn't obviously know that much about my faith, so we knocked heads a bit in terms of like the whole sex before marriage thing. Mauritius. Just think about Mauritius. It's your honeymoon. <laughs> For him to be able to stick it out, let me know that, then he must really love me. If he's willing to wait, because it's not everyone that is able to do that. Please, is this the last? Probably no. <laughs> I'm married, right? <laughs> <laughs> Here's hoping Amit appreciates it.
In Shropshire, it's the day before the wedding for demanding Mark. But with a hectic schedule to manage, it's bright to be Alice who's feeling the pressure. The to-do list today is go to the venue, set everything up there, ar arrange all the decorations and everything. Then we've got to come back into town. Mark's having a manicure and his hair done. And then we're going to collect all the dresses, all the flowers. So I hope we'll get everything done, yeah. It's, uh, I'm pretty stressed today, aren't I? Yeah, <laughs> you woke up stressed. <laughs> first port of call is the hotel to drop off their table decorations. If any of these glasses in the back get broken, I'm going to panic then. I need to take the lead sometimes with the major decisions because you stress about them. I stress and then give up, don't I? Because <laughs> I actually gave up looking for a venue just because it was so difficult to find somewhere. Alice had lost all hope already and I said, no, let's go look at one last place and I found the venue we've got at the minute. Why doesn't that surprise me? We're going to check now to see if we've got no breakages. I think we're all right. They're hoping manager Rob is around so they can show him how they want their centrepieces laid out. It's all OK. The stones have moved about a bit. Yeah. But he's not there. We're here at 9 o'clock and nobody's here to meet us. We thought someone was going to be here to show them what we wanted. Because there's a few details that we need to explain to them, don't we? We can't just let them set it up without seeing it. I'm a bit annoyed about that now. Did you let them know we're coming at nine? Mm-hmm. I'm going to go see if there's anyone that can... Yeah. <laughs> just to add to Alice's stress, baby Duke is getting restless. <laughs> Rob's going to be at 11. That's cutting it fine for Mark's afternoon salon appointments, so he's keen to set up a sample table and leave. I hope they're going to be as precise as we are with these. Yeah. As long as it looks like that, yeah. I'm happy. I think we're fine. So you want to show someone else and then head off? No. Yeah. So we're going to have to hang around here for a bit, which we really don't have the time to spare, but we're going to have to wait around to see somebody. With the prospect of being delayed for his pampering session, Mark tries once more to delegate and get packing. Back up. So this is the centrepiece. Yeah. If you're guessing it's all of those. Yeah, yeah. so on the top of the box, uh, it's written table one, table two, because okay. the name tags are in there as Lovely. well. Brilliant. I'm worried we're not going to make the nails and everything like that. Let's take nice. nails. His nails, actually. Twelve. Uh, Rob's going to see it set up, yeah. so you can just run through it yeah. with him. I'll leave it out to yeah. show Rob, yeah. and then straight, yeah. I'll, as soon as he walks through the door, yeah. I'll just, tell him. I'm sure they've done this before, Beth. I know, I know. <laughs> we haven't. <laughs> but just in the nick of time... Look, he's just arrived. Manager Rob appears. Hi, uh, you're Robert, right. Please Mark, please meet you. Howdy, mate. Oh, you come and sit down, please. With Alice drained, Mark goes into full groomzilla mode. Before Alice comes in, we want um, a bridesmaid and a groomsman walk in, walk in, and as they part in the front, they need to go sit down. And there's the table plan there, so right. we're having two at the back, two in the front, and one in bang in the centre. Table numbers, like likes on the one there. There's for the rest of the table. We've got a guest book. Right. With pens. silver yeah, and gold yeah, pens yeah. for it. We wanted some photos like of people that can't be here yeah, with yeah. us, so they, they just want to be put up somewhere. I haven't really been a bridezilla until today, have I? No. He's been a groomzilla. Well, <laughs> nice to see. Nice. <laughs> yeah, but it's nice for the group yeah. get involved, yeah. because a lot of time it is the bride. You've so. done most of it, haven't you, really? Yeah, yeah. Right, are we done? Yeah, we need to go going? get nails and everything else done. Go on, groomzilla. <laughs> Back in Croydon, it's the day before perfectionist Michelle ties the knot with her childhood sweetheart, Amit. And she's hoping she's got everything covered. What we have here are the drinks for the wedding. It's probably like 200 bottles here. We've got some alcohol. I don't personally drink, but some of Amit's family do, so we've had to cater for that side. So I'm a bit overwhelmed with the amount of alcoholic beverages that we have here. Tomorrow, she hopes to wow her 570 guests 
with her meticulously planned Ghanaian Indian ceremony and reception. There's just one last detail to check, the dress. And Michelle has brought most of her family along to see her choice. Hello. Hello. So Michelle. Yes. Ready to flip the dress? We've got the gang. Yeah, the yeah. Wow. Like when I walked in and I saw it up, it feels like I'm really getting married tomorrow now. So yeah, it's exciting. Where are you taking it to now? We're taking it home. To the hotel. Yeah, and that's where you're getting ready. Yeah. Okay. I don't plan to try it on because I don't want to mess it up. I don't want to get any makeup on it. I just, I think I just want to leave it as it is. So I'll just leave it hanging there, maybe stare at it for a little bit. But then, yeah, just, just walk away after that. <laughs> With the dress, I hope. In Shropshire, after the stress of the morning, groom-to-be Mark is going for some pre-wedding pampering. Um, well, I've never had a manicure before, so I don't really know what to expect. Well, I'm hoping my mates, none of them drive past now, because I don't think I'll be in the good box if they see me getting a manicure. Hi, Mark. How are you? All right, and you? Yeah, good, thank you. I'm Nora. I'll be doing your treatment today. <laughs> All right, I'm here for a manicure. Lovely. <laughs> Take a seat. I won't be two seconds. Right. Lovely. My nails aren't in the best state. Alice normally pins me down once a week and chops them. Don't but she said, she said she's going to leave them for you to do this time. So they're a little bit long and they're in a bit of a state. Brilliant. So don't worry, we'll get them looking lovely, no problem at all. While Mark gets his mano cure. This is the cuticle pusher back end. <laughs> Looks like a surgical tool. <laughs> Alice has a long to do list to get through. Just going to my mum's house just to drop Duke off. She's going to be babysitting for a little bit. Uh, picking up the dresses, flowers, and pick up the buttonholes, and then we'll be going to the hotel to drop everything off. I'm pretty stressed today. Meanwhile, Mark is getting to grips with being treated like a bride-to-be. I can't stand these sandpaper board things. It's like nails on a chalkboard to me. We call them files as well. <laughs> I've never heard them being called sandpaper things. <laughs> I like that. I think it is really nice, though, for a man to look after himself. Alice said she's not putting a ring on these fingers in the state they're in, so <laughs> I needed to get them sorted out. Well, I don't actually think that your nails are that bad. I don't think they're that bad at all. Well, the difference between Alice doing this and Laura doing this is my fingers aren't bleeding, so that's, not, that's a really good sign there. <laughs> His fiancée has got to her mum's house with a very tired little boy. Oh, good nanny. You come to Lola. Come good on, nanny. Oh, that guy. Are you tired today? I'm exhausted today. Absolutely exhausted. Why? Because he hasn't slept at all? He has not slept last night. Half eleven last night he woke. Till three o'clock. I didn't sleep last night, and I know tonight I'm not going to sleep. So tomorrow I'm just, just going to be like a walking zombie. But I do want to. I, I do want to try and have an early night tonight. So as soon as he goes to bed, I want to go to bed yeah. because I'm at, I'm at the point where I could cry because I'm that tired. You'll be all right. Stop panicking. I can see you panicking a little bit. Everything will go all right. There's nothing but calm back at the salon. How are they feeling? Really nice, actually. They're lovely and soft. I think they feel a little bit softer than Alice's hands. <laughs> Brilliant. There Thank you go. very much. I think the nails turned out a lot better than what I thought and was a lot less painful than what I thought, and they look really, really good. Time to check on the missus. But Alice's dad can't resist giving Groomzilla a ribbing. How's your nails, princess? <laughs> Yeah, you're going to get some stick over that, aren't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Little diamonds and the, the like put on them, did you, eh? Yeah, they look lovely. <laughs> did, you, did you have anything waxed? No, let's No. Go. No. <laughs> <laughs> Unfazed, Mark heads off to his next appointment at the hairdressers. But Alice still has all the dresses to take to the venue. Right. How am I going to do this now? I've got to wear this tomorrow. It's so heavy. Picky Mark let Alice know exactly what he didn't like in a wedding dress. But she's kept her choice secret and can only hope he approves tomorrow. John, when Mark sees me in the dress, I think he'll be uh, very shocked. 
Because it's completely different to what he had in mind. Fingers crossed he'll be so chilled he won't complain. Mark's on to his next pampering session at the barber's, and he seems to be getting a bit used to the grooming. I think secretively I might be going back to have my nails done. It was quite enjoyable, actually. Very happy with that. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, on the handsome side of things, I think I'm a 10. Alice is the lucky one to be putting a ring on my finger. Yeah, I don't think she's feeling it right now. I'm just on the way to drop off the wedding dress and the bridesmaid's dresses at the hotel. Set everything up there ready for tomorrow. Yeah, stress level out of 10 is probably 9 at the minute. Finished at the hotel, Alice can only wish she'd had a day to relax before the wedding. Quite easily good to sleep. <laughs> I shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> After a night's rest, anxious bride to be Alice is up at the crack of dawn. Hello. To get her hair styled with her three bridesmaids. Alice's mum, Andrea, is on hand to help her with the big day jitters. I do want to relax today because yesterday yeah, was so stressful, will. so. You will relax today. So yeah. Oh, don't worry. I think you're stressing about not stressing. I think I am. Yes, but it's your day today. I know. Has it sunk in yet that you're getting married awesome. soon? I don't know if it has sunk in or not. It's, it's, get, it's a weird feeling. When it'll sink in is when you see Mark at the end of the aisle. That's <laughs> when it'll hit you <laughs> and you'll be like, Aah. Oh, that's nice. That's oh, lovely, right. yeah. It's nicer with the smaller curls, isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. See you all soon. Bye. Back at the house, demanding groom-to-be Mark has been waiting for a final wedding special delivery. Thanks. So here we have some personalised hip clocks for my best man, my two groomsmen. Um, ordered them a little while ago. I was wondering if they were going to be here in time. Mark is hoping they're exactly as ordered. This one's for Jamie, my best man. It's for David, one of my groomsmen. Two, as expected, just one to go. And we got Make. Oh. <laughs> I think there's been a spelling fault. I've got one of my hip flasks to make, and his name's Jake, so... <laughs> well, I'll just have to give it to him as a laugh because there's no way I'm gonna get them back in time if I send them back now. Um, he'll just have to be make for the day. Could this groomzilla be going soft? In Croydon, the minutely planned Ghana meets India big day has finally arrived for Michelle. She and her nine bridesmaids are getting ready for the Christian part of her epic multicultural wedding. <laughs> it still hasn't hit me that I'm getting married today. I think it's only going to hit me either when I get into the car or when I'm down the aisle. She looks gorgeous and smart for the day. In a short while, Michelle's dad, Michael, will be giving her away to her childhood sweetheart, Amit. With Michelle's strict views on not living together and no sex before marriage, her fiancé's long wait will soon be over. The love that he has for me is so sacrificial and to be able to know that I'm marrying that person today is just amazing. I don't want to keep talking because I know I'll cry if I do keep talking. It's only three days since the disastrous bridesmaids dress fitting, but it seems that the girls have got it together for their demanding bride-to-be. The dresses are fine, um, everyone's yeah. looking amazing. They turn out so lovely. we're just basically all ready. Just time to run quickly through their dance routine. That's not how it's been. That's what we're talking about when we first connect with the boys. Grab their saris for the Indian reception and make their way in the very British weather to the venue. Thank you, everyone. You make a great flower girl. In Telford, Alice and her bridesmaids are at the hotel and there's not much time to get themselves looking beautiful. <laughs> yeah, half an hour is probably not the best ideal time to get ready, but uh, we've got to do it. <laughs> Mark doesn't like a lot of makeup at all. He likes me with no makeup, but I don't like me with no makeup. <laughs> Can you tell her what time it is? We're on at 12.08. As the wedding gets closer, the pressure mounts. You all right? 
I don't feel sick. Yeah, we need to get dressed on. Right, come on. Because it's Operation Get Dress On. While Alice is dressing... She's my nervous. <laughs> ..over at the golf club wedding venue... Mark seems to have everything under control. This is Josh. It's Duke's godfather. He'll be helping Duke down the aisle today to give us the rings. You're looking dapper. Me and little man here look quite sharp. We, we might just upstage the bride. In Shropshire, the clock is ticking for bride-to-be Alice. Right, we need to get you in the dress. Alice has taken a risk with her lacy, sequined, high-necked dress. All pet hates of her opinionated groom. Everybody's got the boobs out apart from me. <laughs> Beautiful. Are you happy? Well, yeah, 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 I'm happy. Very happy. Let's hope Mark is. Someone want to pop open that champagne? Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. At the golf club, while fiancé Mark waits... You're right. ..he hands over his botched gift to groomsman Jake. <laughs> What's it say? Google. Make. Why does it say make? They, they misprinted it. <laughs> I don't know what the guy Go was thinking who printed it. Whose name is Make? <laughs> so, so he's having a second flask full of whiskey. Do I get a refill on mine? No, oh. no, his second one comes empty. Oh, <laughs> fair enough. He might have finally got zen about the finer details, but there's something Mark is still concerned about. I'm feeling quite excited this morning. I'm quite nervous about my speech, um, purely because of the emotions involved in the speech, not really the talk in front of people. I just don't know how I'm going to be able to deliver it. You big softy. Right. In Croydon, Michelle and Amit's 570 guests have gathered for the Christian ceremony, which will kick off the big day for the two 23-year-olds. When you're young, especially, what, 13, mm -hmm. you say, oh, yeah, when we get married, but you don't actually mean it. So it just feels very surreal now to be like, oh, my childhood sweetheart is actually going to be my husband. I, I, Amit Papendra Patel, do take thee, do take thee, Michelle Abenal of Rua McCarthy, to be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. It's a great union which we've had for six years and we want the wedding day to reflect how amazing it's been. Yeah. So that's really the highlight, to be honest, just make it as epic as possible to kind of reflect how great the past six years have been. Where you go, where you go, I will go. I will go. Where you lodge, where you lodge, I will lodge. I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. Your people shall be my people. The Indian people. The Indian people. <laughs> people shall be my people. Shall be my people. You please kiss the bride. Despite Michelle's worries her bridesmaids' dresses wouldn't fit and some slightly reluctant novice dancers, everyone seems to be giving it their all in front of the huge audience. In Shropshire, Alice has finally made it to the venue. Come on down the road. Really late, aren't I? Yeah, you are. <laughs> in front of 50 friends and family, Alice is finally calm. But tough man Mark is already feeling the emotion of the day. Alice, I give you this ring as a symbol of my love and affection, and to respect and cherish you throughout our lives together. Lucky for Mark, Toddler Duke lightens the mood. <laughs> There was a few interesting things that happened, but it just added to it. A few funny things, really, wasn't there? Like, yeah. Duke was blowing raspberries. And the one-year-old missed his moment. Uh, yes. Has he got the ring? No. Duke was supposed to walk down the aisle with the rings, but he was passed around between all the relatives, and he ended up on the wrong side of the aisle. Yeah. We didn't know who had the rings for a second. <laughs> but they got there in the end.
So you're officially mine now. I am. Mrs. Harrison. I'll take it back down. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the new. <laughs> Months of planning, stresses about the venue and the tricky decorations all seem forgotten. For Mark, it's now just the speech to get through. And my beautiful bride, Alice, um, you look absolutely gorgeous. Um, <laughs> she knows all about me and yet loves me all the same. Um, thank you for providing a loving, caring home for our little family. <laughs> Come on, mate. My wife, my bride, my joy. That's it. Beautiful. The big question for Alice is if Mark approves of her dress choice. I think you look absolutely gorgeous today. Um, was a real big surprise. Nothing like you expected the dress to be. And this was the one that you were saying, oh, no, I don't like it. I don't like lace. I don't like anything high neck. But I absolutely love it. You look absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. I think I'm not going to give input on Alice Wears anymore because I think she does a really good job on her own now. Lucky girl. So maybe Alice has stolen the spotlight then? I, I rated myself a 10 out of 10 for handsomeness. I'd say 10. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> did me and Duke upstage uh, you a bit? Yeah, you did. <laughs> Groomzilla. Please, can you put your hands together? Make some noise for the family of the bride. The McCarthy family. Back in Croydon, the epic Ghana Meets India reception has begun. Before that was an entrance. Yep, yep. Ladies and gentlemen, please come and give Amit's family a round of applause. Michelle and her bridal party have transformed for the Indian part of the wedding celebration. And she's surprising her new hubby with a secretly rehearsed special performance. After months of intricate planning, over £30,000 spent and hours of dance rehearsals, everything is running like clockwork and even perfectionist Michelle is impressed. This wedding has been the best day of my life. It's filled with everything that I think we can do. Yeah. Even better. So, yeah, we can't wait, really. Just want to go and have more, some more fun. And the six-year wait to be together is finally over. I think it's going to be exciting living with Amit for the first time. I'm looking forward to learning new habits or just seeing a different side of him that I don't see now. And Amit's probably looking forward to seeing a whole lot more of Michelle as well. So, what big project will Michelle be managing next? Children. Babies, babies. babies. Lots of lots of children. I think there's only one way to make children in this world. 